What's up everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be covering off a couple of things. This is gonna be the tale of two lawns. My lawn, my neighbor's lawn. We're gonna be doing two different styles of feeding this year. One spoon feeding and one at interval feeding around every six to eight weeks. We're gonna talk about how to do that, how to get set up, what might be the best options for you, and get into a little spraying and talk about those products. So, let's go ahead and roll that intro. What's up everybody? All right, so I'm just gonna lay out a couple of things here real quick, just some parameters so everybody gets an idea of where we're going with this, and then we'll jump down and take a condition look at uh, Danny's lawn before we get into more of it. So here's the basic premise here. Um, his lawn right now has been fed one time this year. So total apps that it's actually gotten is, so fertilizers only had 1801, that was back in April. And I think it was around the 26th of April, so we're running like eight weeks almost on that, seven weeks and it's had, uh, I did aerate at that same time, and then I did RGS a few weeks after that, and there's videos that co coincide with all that stuff. So other than that, nothing else has happened over there. My lawn has had also 1801 RGS aerate as well. That's all gone out over here, and I've kept mine low, but in the consideration for this video, I, I'm gonna change that up again. I'm gonna go ahead and let my grass grow up to be more equivalent to what he's doing over there around two and a half inches. So I gotta let mine flush up for the next little while and grow back out of the condition that it's in right now. So even after the stress, you can kind of see behind it, it's still just got a little bit of off color, but it's all that grass is still coming back up from the low stresses. Quick order of business here real quick. On the Loncology shop, shop.loncology.com, the uh, soil testing consultations, those are up and they are moving. I've already had 30 or so, 40 of those come through. Everyone should have an answer in their inbox. Please make sure you add answers at Loncology to your safe senders list so that you know when I'm responding back to you with your recommendations so we can have a little back and forth. So a few of you uh, I've had some good back and forth with on stuff. That looks like it's going pretty simply. I hope it's all uh, very easy for you to understand. And you know, feel free to jump on there and take a look at that. There'll be a link down below. Secondly, it would be really good if everybody subscribed who's just watching this because they want to learn about spoon feeding because we're going to be doing a comparison between interval and spoon feeding between two lawns all season long. So make sure you click that button, okay? Okay, so let's lay some ground rules here real quick so you understand the difference between the two. Now on a standard interval feeding, we're looking at somewhere between like five and eight weeks between applications. So since we're already there over on one lawn, we're gonna continue that through the course of the season. On a spoon feeding or more of a slow feed, however you wanna look at it or call it, we're doing something a little bit different. Over the course of the season, we're actually gonna put out the same amount of material, but we're gonna do it in weekly increments instead of every six weeks. So they're still getting the same amount of nutrition, it's just getting to it in a different way. So we always need to start with a full application of whatever our initial feeding is going to be. That fills the tank, as it were, and then we're able to break things down. So I have a plan for what we're gonna do for fertilizer for this round. So let's go ahead and jump over to Danny's lawn, and then we'll come back over here after that and, and we'll talk a little bit more. We're over here on Danny's front lawn. Now, if you guys remember what this looked like, yes, it was early spring. You saw it in the update video. You can take a look up here and watch that to see what we've done so far. But all that has happened over here is one dose of 1801, uh, about a third pound of in. We did a dose of aerate at the nine ounce rate, and we did RGS at a six ounce rate. That's all that's happened this year. The first initial feeding was now seven weeks ago roughly and so it's time though you wouldn't really think so because this is looking pretty dang stellar now a couple of things here we'll get to the spraying in a minute and i'll show you how all that's going to go we'll do everything again in the ortho sprayer and i'm actually going to have danny do that today because he hasn't had the opportunity so he's going to be part of that and i'll film him and it'll be really super fun teach a man to fish so the grass is thickened up like crazy it is awesome follow me now you can see behind me here. If you remember, I told you that that little area by the hot tub, that was going to be a problem because of compaction and that grass has filled in and we still have not done a whole lot. So my goal in this is to just maintain that six to eight week feeding. We'll put out enough product every single time to do it. And this place can continue to look 
awesome. Uh, now that we're getting regular cuts on it, it's got good water, summer heat's going, we're, we're in good shape right now. So here's what's gonna happen today as far as products go. Remember, we're just a little over 3,000 square feet in this lawn. Mine is a little over 1,500 back there, and I already told you what we're gonna be putting down on the backside there. I wanna use green pop on this lawn. So we've done 1801 already at a full rate. We're gonna do a full rate of green pop over here. Now, I don't know the phosphorus levels. We've not done a soil test on here, so we're just gonna fly into this one blind with some very sort of basic and generic recommendations on what I would use with my own products. So today, this is going to get Green Pop 16212, and it's going to get Humic 12. So I'm gonna run the Humic 12 at a six ounce rate, and I'm going to run the Green Pop at a 15 ounce rate. That's gonna go at a 15 ounce rate. And that's all that this is gonna get. And then we're not gonna be looking at doing another feeding until the end of July. So once that time comes around, we're gonna be looking at doing some minor elements, plus in, plus this, plus that, but we'll get to that when that time comes and just kind of see how we're able to do this on what would be a five-step program for this area. Our season is going to end pretty much around Halloween, so everything is going to step towards that point with near Halloween being our final application. So I think we could probably get into the spraying and maybe we'll talk a little bit about phosphorus before that happens. Okay, so as I mentioned over there, we're gonna be running green pop and I wanna talk a little bit about phosphorus just so you have an idea of what we're going for here and why I'm choosing to go this way right now. So that's green pop right there, 16212. Uh, this is typically what we use for seeding. We sell it in a seeding pack. It's something that you can get pretty easily. I have a lot of people who have phosphorus deficiencies are using this both pro and DIY. It's become kind of a standard sort of workhorse FERT, but there's a couple of benefits about it that I think everybody should know. So let's run through it by the numbers. All right, so this is a fairly dense product. It's over 11 pounds per gallon. It's 21% FOS, 16% nitrogen, and 2% potash. Now, the other things that are in here is there are humic and kelp, and the measurements on those are actually designed a very specific way. If you run this at the full 15 ounce rate, that's gonna get you about a quarter pound of FOS out per uh, thousand square feet, it's like 11, roughly 11 pounds uh, per acre. And then you're gonna get about a fifth a pound of in out of that as well. So you've got those sort of working in tandem. Now, that's at a total of a 15 ounce rate. Included in that rate, which is sort of the benefit of this particular product, there is the functionality of aerate and RGS in that bottle. So you're actually getting a three ounce rate of each of those inside your 15. That's something that not a whole lot of people really know about. So you're getting a couple of added benefits on this particular product. So if I run a full rate out over on the lawn across the way here, that's going to get basically a measure of RGS and a measure of aerate along with that feeding that's going to go into it. Now here's a couple things to note about phosphorus. My soil test showed that I had about 78 parts per million, uh, which is pretty high actually. So I didn't really need to add anything in. However, again, in keeping things equal, I don't know what the soil condition is on this other lawn over here. I'm gonna treat it like it's just going to need some basic recommendations. And so we're going to run it with some P in there. You know, P, not P-E-E, -E, but P, capital P. So in order to keep, again, all things created equal, here's how this is gonna work. So in spraying my lawn, I've got 1,500 square feet over here. I'm gonna run three ounces per thousand of this, and I'm also gonna run three ounces per thousand of Humic 12 over there on the other side we are going to run 15 ounces of green pop and we're going to run six ounces of humic 12. that's what's going to go on that one and that's not going to get fed again until the end of july here though we're going to be doing weekly so i'm going to use the green pop over here for the next five to six weeks and then we'll move into a different feeding and then i will alternate the different bio stems as well, running them only at a three ounce rate. So it'll get RGS one week, humic one week, dethatch one week, 002 one week. We're just gonna kind of rip through all of those. So you'll see the difference between a spoon feeding and a standard interval feeding using only liquids and basically getting the same amount of material out just in separate times.
Now, I do want to point out a couple of things here real quick. A lot of this is all going to come down to personal preference, and not all of us can be out on a lawn every day like this guy. Now, for me, I do enjoy coming out once a week at least. I do something in the lawn every day, not necessarily a feeding or anything, but there could be watering, there's mowing, there's all of these other things checking the general condition, maybe managing hot spots, whatever it might be, that's something that I would do on my own lawn. For many people though, I'd say for 80 or 90% of the populace out there, it, that's a little too much to ask. So running a little more of an interval feeding becomes a lot easier. I kind of want to get both of those points across here on how you can have something you're doing all the time versus something that really all you have to do is feed once every five to eight weeks and then you're just mowing and watering the rest of the time. So I just want to make sure that I make that very clear. Scientifically, I can't really say that one way is better than the other. I would just say that if you're doing more shortcut grass and you have, or I should say, or you have sandier soil, you should be feeding a little bit more often with less amounts because you don't necessarily want to push that growth out and you're putting it under a little bit more stress with it sh when it's short. In sandy soils, you just don't have as much holding capacity as you would in a clay. So it's better to just sort of feed a little more, uh, less more often, I guess really is the best way to put it. And honestly, that's how your watering system works as well. So those are just a couple little things to consider when you're going down this road, but know that by the end of the year, your total package actually ends up being the same. You're gonna end up putting about the same nutrient supplementation out, whether you're spoon feeding or whether you're doing it on an interval system. So we are over here on Timmy's lawn. It's Danny. Mm. Mm. Danny. Uh, Danny's going to be doing the first uh, application he's ever done uh, to his own lawn with this stuff. Yeah, what is this stuff? Yeah, so so here's basically what the audience is really excited about this because we're going to be running a very standard program over here utilizing like an every six to eight week application method. And here's what we're running today. The very first application that we did over here was a product called Green Punch, and it was an 1801. So that's 18% nitrogen, no phosphorus, and a little bit of potassium. That's what these three numbers are right here. Got it. Today we're running a 1621 2, and we're going to load up some of the phosphorus. That's why we want to do this today, because it'll just sort of help growth and vigor and energy, and also give it a little bit of feeding to keep sort of pushing it along. That's what that is. Perfect. This one, the Humic 12, this is actually just a soil feeding product. So I like to get that out in everything, every time, some measure of Humic with every single fertilizer that we put out and we put it in pretty much every product we manufacture. So put that on every time you apply any other fertilizer. Right, so this'll just make everything function better. Got it. That's really all it is. So it's a conduit for more efficiency. Perfect. So have you ever used one of these, Timmy? I have not, Danny. Right, Danny. <laughs> so, uh, the whole thing here is uh, we have to run a certain amount of product out over your lawn and it's split pretty evenly. So we're going to have about 2,000 square feet in the back and about 1,500 square feet in the front. So with this product right here, in order to get about a six week feeding, we're going to put roughly 15 ounces per thousand square feet. So I need to do 30 ounces. Got it. So we're going to fill this up to 30 ounces with this first, spray the lawn out. Then as soon as it's empty, we're gonna come back with this and we're only gonna do about six ounces per thousand with this. So it's gonna need a total of 12. So we'll fill that up to here, spray it out again, and then repeat on the front. Dumb question, but so this this is empty. This is just a, a hose basically to allow, okay. Yeah, ahead. so uh, any concentrate you can put into here and ortho, 
Scott's Miracle Grow, that company uses these for everything that they make. Got it. So you can run concentrates through it to, to get out on your lawn easily. Cool. So it's multifunction too. I mean, some people buy these to wash their cars. They put soap in them and they can spray it out. So as long as you don't put anything Use else it in it, yeah, you, they're, they're very functional. So at the end of this, you win this prize. Excellent. You get your very first, <laughs> you get your very first hose in sprayer. That's all I ever wanted. It is. So let's go ahead. We'll do a little shaking, a little mixing, a little spraying, and do some spray tips along the way. How's that sound? Sounds great. Let's Woo! Nice job, Billy. Timmy. I mean, yeah. Danny. <laughs> okay, so one thing that we did do different on this particular setting, since we're only running through 1,500 square feet, the two products have been mixed together. So, watch for the drop oh so Tommy's made the connection Danny Danny's made the connection and uh, he's gonna start spraying knock this out the humic 12 and the green pop mix okay together no problem doing that in concentrate just so everybody's aware it doesn't uh, gel up or do anything weird so those two can go together and make your spray job a little bit easier so we only have to do one tank on this to knock it out. And then it's done. It's done diddly. This episode is brought to you by Pile of Hose. Just when you think everything's going to go easy, Pile of Hose is there for you. He's coming down the home stretch now doing the classic rookie reverse. The wind's in his face and everything. All right, y'all, so that's what's on the docket for today. We're done. He's over there wrapping out the last little part of the hillside, and, you know, the lawn is looking pretty, pretty spectacular. So, here's where we go from here. We've got spoon feeding happening on one side of the fence, and we've got standard six to eight week feeding happening on the other side of the fence. Same products are gonna go down, different timing. In the meantime, I'm gonna help old Danny boy clean up and I will talk to you guys real soon. See ya.